dinner is on us. I'd like to order something for pickup, please. But just how much sodium are these big chains delivering? With the dietitian, I can be surprised with the amount of sodium that is found in some of these meals. We've got some shockers. That is mind-boggling. You look very surprised. That'll shake up your choices. Honestly, that's astonishing. Don't dine out until you watch your marketplace. Okay, milestones. I'd like to order something for pickup, please. Got the Caesar salad. I'd like to order the spinach and artichoke dip, please. Chicken fajitas. Thank you for calling Joey Restaurant. The vegan Hunan Kung Pao. Mediterranean bowl looks good. Here to pick up the spinach and artichoke dip. We're putting takeout to the test at popular sit-down chain restaurants. Hi, Dexter, one. How can I help you? Jack Astor's. Boston Pizza. Earl's. Kelsey's Original Roadhouse. Joey restaurants and milestones. We're mostly ordering healthy sounding options to try and stick to our New Year's resolutions. Plant-based menu. Mediterranean bowl order place. But we want to know, is there more sodium in these foods than you might think? To find out, we're heading to the University Health Network's Cardiac Rehab Program in Toronto to meet two heart heroes, registered dietitian Samantha Shavior and Dr. Paul O. Perfect blood pressure, very nice. He's the medical director of UHN's Cardiovascular Prevention and Rehab Program. How are you? Samantha, good. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank good you. Good to see you. They know the impact too much sodium can have on our health. There can be a large amount of sodium in some of those takeout meals. And you're a dietitian, you know all about this stuff, but how hard is it for someone even like you when it comes to watching sodium? Honestly, it is very challenging. I can be surprised with the amount of sodium that is found in some of these meals. When you say sodium, I think salt. What's the difference? So sodium will be found in different uh, foods, not just salt. People will often say, oh, you know, don't add any salt to my meal, thinking that's going to reduce the sodium. But majority of it has already been added in, in the seasonings, the marinades, foods that have been prepared ahead of time uh, before you even get to the restaurants. And that makes it hard to avoid if it's added in before the fact. Absolutely. Dr. O and Samantha say we all need to limit our sodium intake. So excess sodium has been linked to a number of health problems. Cardiovascular would be our realm particularly, so too much salt equals elevations in blood pressure. High blood pressure is associated, of course, with risk of stroke, risk of heart attack. So, sounds simple, little innocent white, little uh -huh. powder, but can have dire health consequences if we take too much. So, how much is too much? Health Canada says we should aim for about 1,500 milligrams of sodium a day. The daily max? 2,300 milligrams. So how do restaurant meals measure up? All of the restaurants we ordered from have their nutrition info on their websites. So we're checking it out to see how much sodium they say these items have. Hi, can I help you? Hi there, I'd like to order the uh, spinach and artichoke dip, please. First up, an appetizer. The spinach and artichoke dip from Boston Pizza. It's our sodium shock number one. I think a lot of people would see that there are some vegetables listed in the name and think, hey, this is a lower sodium option. But when we look at it, there's actually quite a bit of sodium coming from the cheese and other ingredients here. And it's not just the dip. There's going to be sodium in the actual pizza bread itself. This appetizer has 2,520 milligrams of sodium. Boston Pizza says it serves three people. So that's 840 milligrams of sodium per person. It's about a third of all the sodium you should be having for the entire day, the actual limit. What does that much sodium translate to in salt? Let's see what that looks like in terms of salt packs. Yeah. Seeing it in terms of salt is kind of an easier way to understand sodium and all the different milligrams that we're talking about. Yeah. These salt packets are about half a gram each. So this is four. Give or take. Yep. The amount of sodium in one serving of this appetizer is the equivalent of about four packets of salt. That is shocking. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Do you think people realize that just the appetizers? I don't think so. I think especially, you know, breads, those are often a surprise for people. A big contributor of sodium, but also the, the small little dip can definitely pack a punch. We reached out to Boston Pizza for comment, but didn't hear back. 
Samantha's lower sodium suggestion at Boston Pizza? Get a slice of garlic toast instead. It's still not necessarily a low sodium choice as 330 milligrams of sodium, but because you're just having the one slice, you're able to uh, reduce that sodium intake. Time for a sodium shock number two. We picked up a roasted garlic Caesar salad entree for Milestones. You want to wager a guess? How much sodium are we talking about mm. in this dish? It's the company that the lettuce is keeping that's the problem here. A problem if you're watching your sodium. Milestone's roasted garlic Caesar salad has 1,590 milligrams of sodium. That's about two-thirds of the daily recommended max. It doesn't leave room for other meals, that's for sure. Let's see what that much sodium translates to in packets of salt. The sodium in the salad is equal to about eight packets of salt. So that's really surprising. Salad by itself doesn't necessarily mean healthy. So what can you do to slash the sodium? Maybe see if you could leave the croutons and the bacon off on the side and the dressing, and then just sprinkle a small amount. Milestones tells us their Caesar salad is as traditional as it comes, but they're always looking to reduce sodium where possible. And they're working on a slight reformulation of this dressing, along with a couple of other sauces. Our next stop, Joey Restaurants. Their Mediterranean bowl is our sodium shock number three. I think that the word Mediterranean may have a bit of a health halo around it. Of course, the Mediterranean diet itself does have great heart health benefits. And we see there are, you know, some great fiber-rich options in there, like the chickpeas and there's some chicken. But unfortunately, there are some sneaky sources of sodium in there. Whenever you see the word marinade, smoked, pickled, or seasoning, you want to think sodium. The Mediterranean bowl from Joey has 2,530 milligrams of sodium. That's more than the daily recommended max in just one dish. That's one dish, your entire kind of upper limit. So th this is too much. Um, you know, I, I guess it should be something that should be shared if, if one was gonna dive into something that, uh, that has this much color, texture, flavor, and sodium. Let's see what that much sodium translates to in salt. Wow, the, to the packets. Yes, to the packets we go. I'm going to be here all day. Yeah. Wow, that's so much. Wow. The sodium in the Mediterranean bowl is equal to about 12 and a half packets of salt. Most people would not imagine putting that much salt into just one serving. We're heading to the Hamilton Farmer's Market to ask shoppers what they think of this sodium surprise. I like salt. No salt, no fat, no flavor. That's my motto. When you think of Mediterranean diet, do you think healthy? What do you think? Yeah, I think healthy, yeah. Yeah, I think it's very healthy. If I saw it on a menu, uh, I would not assume that it was high in sodium. So this particular dish has more than 2,500 milligrams of sodium. Oh, wow. So okay. above the daily max. That does really surprise me. It's uh, definitely surprising. <laughs> it's a lot. Samantha says this substitution at Joey shrinks the sodium. The crispy tofu bowl, mm -hmm. that's 1,330 milligrams of sodium. Definitely a lot lower than this particular dish. We reached out to Joey Restaurants for a comment, but we didn't get a response. Our sodium shockers take us to New York City where consumers get a warning. Red lobster dishes here, let's take a look. Chain restaurants are required to put a warning icon on menu items that have 2,300 milligrams of sodium or more. Warning, warning above it. Another one, another one, another one. And a message that explains the potential health risks of high sodium diets. It can increase blood pressure, the risk of heart disease, stroke. The policy applies to chain restaurants with 15 or more locations. That's got a sodium warning sign. Check out this menu. How about Olive Garden? Oh, yeah. You can see the warnings. We're heading to the New York City Health Department to find out more about why they started the policy. 
Amaka Nekwe is the director of strategic nutrition initiatives here. When you walk into a chain restaurant, you may not be able to tell exactly how much sodium is in the product. For example, you may have two very similar sounding items, let's say uh, two turkey sandwiches, and they may have dramatically different amounts of sodium. Amaka says from the start, consumers were in support of these labels, but restaurants, not so much at first. There was a legal challenge brought by uh, the National Restaurant Association. Ultimately, the policy prevailed, and we were happy to see the policy go into place. Restaurants might say that the amount of sodium is on their website, that they don't need it on the menus. It's really hard to imagine someone taking that extra step in time to look for that nutrition information. What's really great for consumers is if when they're standing at the menu board, they can see that information immediately and make their decision right on the spot. Early research suggests consumer behavior may be changing as a result of the warning icon. We have preliminary evidence that shows that consumer purchases at sit-down restaurants have less sodium. That's good news for New York. That's great news for our consumers. Does Canada need something like this, Samantha? I think that would be very helpful. It's very clear to indicate, hey, this is a high sodium food, beware, and then somebody can choose another option on the menu that isn't uh, higher in sodium and doesn't contain that label. Coming up, more sodium shockers. In just one tablespoon of soy sauce, you can have almost a thousand milligrams of sodium. And our biggest reveal yet. 14, 16. This is your marketplace. We're putting popular sit-down chain restaurants to the test and revealing some sodium shockers. Next up, how about something from a plant-based menu? Earl's Vegan Hunan Kung Pao is our sodium shock number four. People associate vegan foods with having nutrition benefits, and the vegan diet is a great diet choice, but oftentimes we do need to be careful because there can still be a lot of sodium in the dish. Earl's initially tells us their vegan Hunan Kung Pao has 3,110 milligrams of sodium. That's more than the daily recommended maximum. That is uh, mind-boggling. Let's see what that much sodium looks like in packets of salt. We're gonna be here a while. Wow. Five, not even close. Thank gosh. <laughs> this plant-based dish has the equivalent sodium of about 15 and a half packets of salt. There's a ginger soy sauce that they're using, so that's gonna be one of the key contributors of sodium here. And just one tablespoon of soy sauce, you can have almost a thousand milligrams of sodium, so it can really add up. Earls tells us after hearing from Marketplace, they made updates to the dish and lowered the sodium to 2,850 milligrams. That's still over the daily recommended max. They also tell us they provide a variety of menu options, from healthy to more indulgent. And like all of the other restaurants we visited, they have complete nutritional info on their website. Here's Samantha's lower sodium suggestion at Earls. There's the vegan spring greens and grain salad, and that one comes in at just 600 milligrams of sodium for the dish. So that's a big savings in terms of the sodium content. Time for the biggest sodium shocker on our takeout spree. Kelsey's original roadhouse, here we go. Chicken fajitas. Kelsey's chicken fajitas are sodium shock number five. I think a lot of times people would be choosing this type of dish because they see lots of chicken, they see vegetables, and that's often something we're encouraging people to eat more of. But unfortunately, there is quite a bit of sources of sodium in this particular dish. How much sodium? Wait for it, 4,340 milligrams. That's nearly double the daily recommended max. All together with 4,000 milligrams plus, that's too much for anybody. So immediately what jumps out to me is the multiple tortillas. Each one of those are gonna be a sneaky source of sodium. Just one tortilla can have 200 to 300 milligrams of sodium in it. I find that surprising because they don't taste salty. Exactly, yeah. So that is that hidden source of sodium that we talk about. It doesn't jump out at you, but it does add a lot of sodium into the diet. What does that much sodium equal in salt packets? Gonna, this is gonna be a team effort for this salt one. Salt packet party okay. here. Mm. 
This dish has the equivalent sodium of just over 22 packets of salt. Yeah. Look at that. A lot. We would never use this much salt on purpose, right? Back at the Hamilton Farmer's Market, what do shoppers think? That's a lot of sodium for one day. So honestly, that's astonishing. <laughs> that's crazy. Then again, if I owned a restaurant, I'd say they ain't gonna eat it unless I salt it down like this because it won't taste as good. We reached out to Kelsey's, but didn't hear back. Samantha's lower sodium substitution at Kelsey's has about a quarter of the sodium. The Kelsey's grilled chicken breast burger with a side of steamed veggies. And so if you're looking for a chicken alternative, you know, you might be surprised that that's actually gonna be a lower sodium choice a burger. Restaurant foods are one of the big sources of sodium in our diet, along with prepackaged or highly processed foods. Sodium is on Health Canada's radar. They're going to require these high sodium warning labels on the front of prepackaged foods. You'll be seeing them on grocery store shelves, but not on restaurant menus. We ask why, but they decline our request for an interview, saying nutritional information is only required on prepackaged foods. But say they are watching to see what happens with the sodium warning labels in New York. Is Health Canada falling short in this? I would love to see um, more information available in the restaurants. And if people are used to seeing it in the grocery stores, then I think they'll start to expect it from the restaurants as well. What would you like to see as a heart doctor? Being able to go out is, is a joy in life. To be social, to be with friends, to dine out, I, I think is, is something that we've missed so much and we really want to enjoy going forward. But to, for us to navigate this safely for, for individuals, then having more information available to us would be great. A birthday surprise is next on the menu, but who invited sodium to the celebration? Do you have a story you think Marketplace should investigate next? Tell us all about it on email, Twitter, and Facebook. This is your marketplace. There we go, check out. We're testing sodium levels in your takeout. There are sodium surprises in every menu item we buy. Here's the birthday cake. Get one of these. And now, we hope you save room for dessert. Jack Astor's has our sodium shock number six. Birthday cake? So cake, why are we talking about sodium when we're looking at something so sweet? Yeah, I think this is another one of those sneaky sources of sodium. This dessert has 956 milligrams of sodium. Jack Astor says it serves two people, meaning each serving has 478 milligrams of sodium about 20% of the daily recommended limit. This one's a real surprise. You know, it's, it looks almost like the size of a large muffin. This is bursting my bubble. First, the bread that I love, now the desserts, which is my favorite part of a meal. People don't realize that there's sodium in things like baking soda and baking powder, but also salt is used as a flavor enhancer and preservative. These are some of the reasons why it could be high in sodium. Uh, what if it is your birthday, though? I don't think there's anything wrong with indulging every now and then. So if it's your birthday, I mean, enjoy it. Or Samantha says this sweet treat is a lower sodium option at Jack Astor's. This restaurant has a option called the world's most ridiculously small brownie. It's just a tiny little serving, but that comes in at just 67 milligrams of sodium. So only 3% of your day's worth of sodium. It's not that we need to be afraid of the sodium and, and eating out, but knowing where to look. And be aware of those hidden sources. Yes, the hidden sources, that's where they get you for sure. But what if you want to lower the sodium when you're eating at home and still have flavorful food? We're meeting this culinary couple to get some tasty tips. Hey, Michael. Hi, Rosa. Thank you for having us over. Nice to see you. Good Come to on see in you. the kitchen. Thank you. The challenge is we want to eat healthier, but we also want food to taste good. Chef Anna Olson is a TV host on the Food Network Canada. Welcome to the Great Chocolate Showdown finale. And a cookbook author. Michael Olson is a chef and educator at the Niagara College School of Culinary Arts. And how is the smoke flavor? So good. Smells so good too. Great. I'm going to get these onions cooking and we're going to fill the kitchen with aromas. It's a combination of the aroma and the taste together. Over the last year, I have family members that have had to 
completely changed their diet because of kidney disease. And so it has been a firsthand lesson. I, I, I lean towards lemon most of all when I'm cooking, when I'm pulling the salt out of it. That's sodium swap number one. Add citrus. I'm gonna add zest to the pan just because it does. You see, that's something up. I never would have thought of. Sodium swap number two, add texture. I'm a big fan of crunch. So something like toasted sesame, toasted peanuts, breadcrumbs, toasted almonds, something like that that adds that little bit of excitement. It elevates the food similarly to salt. Sodium swap number three, add spices or herbs. I'm adding a garam masala. So a, a combination of spices or using fresh herbs is also a great way to build in the flavor so you don't miss the salt. And finally, sodium swap number four. Add some heat. I love the flavor of fresh chilies. I think I've probably got a higher heat tolerance than Anna, mm -hmm. but it wakes your food up. It smells great already. Flavor boosters without the sodium. Bon appetit.